Okay, now that he's occupied. Hello, welcome to the JW Thoughts channel. My name is Wally, and today I am confident it is one of your guys' birthdays, and I have come to give you a birthday present. Well, I mean, I'm not the only one giving you the birthday present because it actually comes directly from Watchtower. They've given us all a wonderful gift by releasing one of the funniest, most ridiculous and absurd videos they've released in a long time. And after the rather somber mood that we had in the last video, I think we're all in for a good laugh. Let's get into it. Oh yeah, don't forget to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. Also, there's the JW Streams channel, and uh, that is where myself and Alt World are going to be doing all of our live streams. So go check that out. I think there's going to actually be a couple this weekend. Anyway, let's do the thing. All over the world, as Jehovah's people, we preach to all who will listen. And we received loving support from our congregations. But how is the global preaching work organized? How do congregations stay united around the world? One of my favorite things about being a ex-Jehovah's Witness is looking back at the things that I used to be so proud of that I would think to myself, wow, this really sets us apart and makes us special. And that is the worldwide brotherhood, the unity that you'll find. And he's like, how can we have this unity around the world? Simple answer, because you have to. Congregations have to follow the direction of the branch office around the world. Those branch offices have to follow the direction of the headquarters, and the headquarters has to follow the direction of the governing body. It's not a pyramid scheme. It is a, it's not even a scheme per se. It's... I have to go make a call. So it's not a surprise that there is a unity amongst all the congregations because if there's not unity, whoever's in charge gets kicked out. If you have one of someone at headquarters that doesn't want to listen to the governing body, they get kicked out. If you have a branch office that doesn't want to listen to the headquarters, they get kicked out. If you have a congregation that doesn't want to listen to a branch office, they get kicked out. If you have an elder that doesn't want to listen to the uh, the circuit overseer, they get kicked out. If you have a ministerial servant that doesn't want to listen, to, you see, it just goes down the chain of command and they will just remove anyone that wants to have an original idea, anyone that wants to use their brain and try and solve any problems or do some logical reasoning. Nope, we don't do things that way, bucko. You need to fall in line. You need to follow the direction because that is what is important. So it's so funny that he's like, at him sitting at the very top of this food chain is like, how do we have this unity? As if it's some big surprise to all of us on the outside world. Like, if you want to get unity, it's because you absolutely have to and you'll get kicked out if you don't. And it's an obvious fact and it is completely unremarkable that they do have unity. The service committee of the governing body oversees these tasks. Their responsibilities are to oversee the preaching work, oversee congregation organization, and to oversee the hospital liaison committee arrangement. First, consider how the service committee supports you in the preaching work. Coordinating the worldwide preaching work is an awesome privilege for the service committee. But we know that it was Jesus who gave the commission to go and make disciples of people of all the nations. And so we recognize that Jesus is the one in charge. Now, this entire video is nothing more than a pathetic attempt for the governing... It's easy. Don't jump up there. 
Now, this entire video is nothing more than a pathetic attempt by the governing body to appear to be these humble fellow workers, and this genius thought, hey, you know what would be really great in the script? If we said, we recognize that everything is being led by Jesus. And so we recognize that Jesus is the one in charge. So in their attempts to sound humble to any thinking person, it's going to have quite the opposite effect. Oh yes, my commission is from Jesus himself. Your commission comes from me, but my commission, it comes directly from Jesus. So he's really demonstrating just how arrogant and how pious the governing body are by trying uh, this pathetic attempt at, oh, well, we're just being led by Jesus. <laughs> like, oh my God. Yep, yep, that's right. You're being led by us, but it's okay because we're being led by Jesus. A real effort is made to provide assistance so that our brothers and sisters, wherever they are, can effectively fulfill their personal ministry. For example, in recent years, we've seen the introduction of special metropolitan public witnessing, prison witnessing, harbor witnessing, reaching out to displaced individuals, for example, individuals in refugee camps. So I find it absolutely hilarious that he says, in recent years, we have these things such as prison witnessing and harbor witnessing. And I'm thinking to myself, I think those avenues of the ministry have been around for a very long time. Zizi is really not moving at all. I'll just move over here for him. But I think those have been around. So someone, I know I get comments all the time of people that I was in the organization for 50 years, 30 years, 60 years. Comment down below and let me know if harbor witnessing and prison witnessing or witnessing to someone that's in a refugee camp and things like that all existed because I find it just weird that he says in recent years we've introduced these things it's like are they so dry on hey we've given you guys this new thing and that's how they're trying to position it right how has the service committee been supporting people in their personal ministry well we've told you to do the thing that you've been doing for decades hey, maybe they'll buy it. And even with the cart witnessing, that's not a new thing. If you go all the way back into the olden days, that's what the, they had carts and, and the little signs they'd wear and the little uh, sound cars that would drive around. So when he says, we're trying to support you in your ministry and all of these new avenues of service, it's the same ministry that they've been doing for a hundred years and it's so unremarkable that they're just having to pretend that it's remarkable. Uh, sorry about this take, I just don't feel like doing another one and ZZ's been there for a long time so the show must go on. Now one other thing that I do think is worth mentioning real briefly is how you have people in this refugee camp, right? And they are not doing anything in a practical way to help. They are just saying, hey, Look at this cool video that I have on my iPad. And it tells about a future time that I can't prove or that I can't demonstrate where everything will be better. Do you feel better now? Not, hey, here's some water. Hey, here's some food. Hey, here is uh, some work. Hey, here's somewhere where you can live. No, none of that. Just, hey, watch this video there, bud. Does that make you feel better? And that's the extent of um, them giving and helping people, which is just really sad and pathetic when you're talking about a billion dollar uh, international organization. And depending on our schedule or our circumstances, opportunities to witness informally may present uh, the best way that we can fulfill our personal ministry. Oh my God. Okay, so I guess we can paint the scene here. They are trying to make it seem like the governing body members are out there just like you, doing some informal witnessing. <laughs> this is not going to work. Even Je believing Jehovah's Witnesses aren't going to watch this and somehow think, oh yeah, look, they're out there preaching just like us, aren't they? They're just not. This is the equivalent of like 
Um, you go into like an Amazon work meeting or something, and they have a video of Jeff Bezos packing back, packing boxes, and delivering them to. Okay, it's easy. You gotta stop hitting buttons. My lord. Oh, anyway, like Jeff Bezos packing boxes and delivering them to people's doors. It's not like the everyday Amazon worker is going to suddenly think to themselves, "Oh wow, he works just like we do. Man, that's awesome." No reasonable person is ever going to think that because it's obvious just how this is shot. Here you have Garrett Loesch sitting there and you have at least three different camera angles. And this guy who's, I mean, I highly doubt this, this person's just a random stranger. This is someone that the whole thing's been staged, basically. They have the whole thing staged. They're surrounded by sound equipment and lighting and multiple cameras. And they're just trying to pretend like he's out there just sitting at a train station doing some informal witnessing. As if this would ever, ever happen or if this was actual, actually happening. Now, the interesting part to me on this is why. I always think to myself, why is Watchtower doing this? Because I can't imagine that they think so little of Jehovah's Witnesses that they think they would buy this. But I can't find any other reason. So if I'm missing something, comment down below. Maybe there is some other intention that the governing body has that I'm missing. But I'm thinking they're, they in their idiotic brains assume that Jehovah's Witnesses are just going to think, yeah, man, this is great. But I don't see that happening at all. Anyway, let's uh, let the show continue. Well over 3,000 new disciples are being baptized every week. And the preaching work is being done in 239 lands around the globe. Now, I know a lot of people, when they hear this, wow, 3,000 people a week, they're going to be astonished. Wow, 3,000, that's a lot. But when you really actually think about these numbers in, rela in relation to the amount of preaching they do, it's very, very uh, disheartening. So I like to estimate, and comment down below if you think I'm wrong, but from my personal experience uh, and being a pioneer for a decade was that and in different congregations, only 5% of baptisms are coming organically uh, from the preaching work. And I personally think that's generous. <laughs> I think it's actually something like 1%. But even if we just say 5% of the baptisms are coming out from the preaching work, well, what will it look like over the last year when you account for how many hours they spent and how many, um, how many hours per baptism if you break down or break off uh, all of the people that are just born into the religion? Well, if you do believe in that 5%, which I think is accurate enough, you will need to spend 166,000 hours for one baptism. Now that equates, so for a pioneer, and a pioneer is someone that spends 70 hours per month in the ministry, and they're seen as these elite examples. They are really out there on the front lines putting in God's good work. That means you would have to pioneer to get, on average, to get one baptism for 197 years. For one. 197 years of pioneering equals one baptism. When I tell people that I pioneered for 10 years, they were like, wow, you've been doing this a long time. Not even close to what is necessary in order to get someone uh, to the point of baptism. Now, if you're saying, Wally, well, that's just because of the pandemic. Surely things look much better when you go previously. Well, going off of their 2018 statistics, which I can't see my notes because Zizi's laying on my note pen because he's annoying. Uh, same exact parameters and everything. It would take 147,000 years in order. What is with you? 147,000 years in order to get that one baptism. And going by that, I think Zizi's on it now, but uh, I believe that would be 175 years of pioneering. So that's how much effort we'll need to go into getting one person. So when you hear him say, oh, look, 3,000 uh, people a week are getting baptized. 
Well, if you actually think about some of those numbers a little closely, you'll see it's not looking so good. The service committee works under the direction of the governing body. We send significant matters to the governing body for direction. An example is the establishing of the teaching toolbox. The service committee gives very close attention to what publications would be considered as basic tools for the ministry. And because there's relatively few of those, all of us can become very well acquainted with them. And thus we're able to become very effective in the ministry in preaching the good news and in starting and conducting productive Bible studies. Now remember, Jehovah's Witnesses have been using Zoom over the last few years, and I think they are intimately familiar with the type of quality that you're going to be getting in some of these video feeds. So if they're trying to pretend like this is real, like Mark Sanderson is actually having a Bible study with this doctor... And they show him in perfect clarity on screen. And then, whoa, where did this come from? They have cameras inside of his house. Multiple cameras in full HD inside the guy's house. <laughs> like, do, do, they, do they really think Jehovah's Witnesses are going to be sitting there thinking, wow, even the governing body has been conducting Bible studies through Zoom. That's so encouraging. They're just like me. A number of you are moving to serve where the need is greater. Many of you are simplifying your life. And in some cases, a number of you are learning and adapting to new cultures. Many thousands have entered into the pioneer service. Now this opens up other avenues of service, such as serving where the need is greater, serving on construction projects, and even entering into a special full-time service. A special full-time servant does not mean that they themselves are special. What is special is the assignment they receive. So I find the format of this to be really interesting. So we have this, this first portion where they're trying to gas themselves up here by showing governing body members out there on the front lines, you know, doing God's good work of preaching, even though it's obviously fabricated. And then they tell people, now, look, you can serve as a pioneer. You can serve in construction. You can go to these special schools, this, that, and the third. But remember... If you go to one of these special schools, it doesn't mean you're special. <laughs> like, was that necessary? Was that necessary just to remind people, hey, even if you do get this special assignment, you're not special. They just don't want anyone to try and have any identification of self or self-worth. I pronounced that really bad, but anyway, we're going to keep going. They just want people to feel like they're nothing more than a number. And someone brought this up in uh, in the comments, and I found it really interesting. And uh, they, they mentioned, why does do they always refer to people as ones and not people or humans? They always refer to them as, as ones. <laughs> These in interested ones and the ones in the congregation... And I was like, wow, that's really true and kind of creepy that they do refer to people as these ones because I think they want to see them as nothing more than a number. They want to just look out at the mass of Jehovah's Witnesses and just think that's number one, that's number two, that's number four, five, six. And they want to try and dehumanize them as much as possible. Because then when they give their crappy advice like, hey, don't leave an abusive relationship, number 472. It's not, hey, don't leave that abusive relationship, Anna Smith. It, it, it has a little bit more of an effect, right? Again, maybe I am just uh, looking a little bit too much into things. But someone brought that up in the comments and I thought it was really interesting. So I thought I'd talk about it. Those in special full-time service might be assigned to serve as a special pioneer, or as a field missionary, or in the circuit work. We need you young brothers and sisters to set spiritual goals, to go to SKE, for you young brothers to 
qualify to be ministerial servants and elders and use sisters to want to be pioneers and missionaries, to drive the work ahead worldwide. Brothers and sisters, when we see your love for the preaching work, it is so heartwarming for us. No matter what your circumstances, you're doing your best to share the good news. Did you catch that language that he was using? Young people, we need you. When you do all of this hard special service, we feel warm. We feel encouraged. Gone are the days for Jehovah's Witnesses when it's, when you're doing that, you make Jehovah happy. You know, how much Jehovah will be pleased if you sign up to Pioneer. Now we're entered a new era of Watchtower propaganda where it's just become we, we, who's the we? Oh, we, the governing body. Well, surely, surely they wouldn't say this very, I, and I'm assuming that it's very specific language because a lot of thought goes into these different programs. Surely they wouldn't say something like we need, we need, and then immediately go on to describe how Watchtower is just a giant pyramid scheme. I mean, they would never do something that dumb, would they? Guys, remember, it's someone's birthday out there. And if they didn't do something just absolutely idiotic, it really wouldn't be a very good birthday, would it? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33 and verse 40 tells us that Jehovah wants things to be done orderly and by arrangement. The scriptures confirm that the heavenly part of Jehovah's organization is well organized. The earthly part must be as well. Our motto is fast on principles and slow on rules. By holding to what is written in the scriptures, we uphold Jehovah's thinking, knowing that we're imperfect, not infallible. As the Bible clearly says, we are not the masters over others' faith. No, 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 no. This clearly demonstrates to me that they put this video together as nothing more than a PR propaganda BS because they are absolutely the masters over Jehovah's Witnesses' faith. If, if, if you went to the elders or your branch office or told the governing body, like, hey, I disagree with you biblically about this, and I don't think Jesus meant this, and I don't think this means that, what would happen? They would immediately be cut off from their friends and family and shunned until they got in line and agreed without question into exactly what the governing body teaches. How is that not a master over someone's goddamn faith? Are, are you kidding me? We don't think we're infallible. We're imperfect. Then why do you lord it over the rest of all of humanity? And don't get it twisted. In this guy's mind, he thinks he is one of eight people that is disseminating spiritual food. The only spiritual food that exists on planet Earth comes out of him and the other governing body members. That's what he thinks in his mind. And that's what he tells people in one, in one video. And in this video, he somehow forgets all of that nonsense about how people need to be loyal to the governing body, how they need to not listen to the voice of strangers, but only listen to the voice of Jesus, and Jesus is only talking through us. It's like they have the worst short-term memory you can possibly imagine, or they're so completely narcissistic, they can just like say one thing and then completely forget that and completely contradict the thing they just said like two minutes earlier. And that is just so unbelievably frustrating to listen to. My goodness. And what's this about, oh, we are slow on rules and we're all about principles. No, you are not. You are not about principles. Jesus, if, if Jesus is real and looking down, he is going to judge them so hard because it, so much about being a Jehovah's Witness is following rules, 
following men, following an organization. And it has very little to do with having a personal relationship with your Lord and Savior. It's all about rules. And again, wait for it. He's about to describe exactly how the hierarchy works within Watchtower. We have congregations in over 200 lands and in hundreds of languages. So providing spiritual food in the form of theocratic direction that meets the needs of the brothers and sisters worldwide is not an easy task. So we're in communication with the branch offices in over 80 lands. Those brothers on the branch committees are like eyes and ears to the governing body. And as a result, we know what the needs are. The service committee sends out theocratic direction by means of the service departments and all the branch offices. As soon as the service departments get that information, they begin translating it, and then they ensure that it's distributed to some 7,000 circuit overseers and over 700,000 elders worldwide. That means that that announcement or that information will then reach your congregation. We are not masters over your faith. We, we are not masters over your faith. But let me describe this theocratic direction and how it goes out all across the globe. It starts with the headquarters. And who answers to the headquarters? The branch offices. <laughs> but the funny thing to me is he says these branch offices are like the eyes and ears. The eyes and ears of whom? The governing body. It's not the eyes and ears of Jesus. It's not so Jesus can make sure we get this. No, they're like the eyes and ears of the governing body. That's right. It starts with them and disseminates all the way down. And they show it. They literally go in like a Google worldview and go from like the whole planet all the way down to an elder giving it giving direction. And where did the direction come from? They said it clear as day. This is absolutely just a pyramid. And it's the governing bodies sit right at the top of that pyramid. So man, I just thought it was too funny that they're like, no, we're not, we're infallible. We're not perfect. We... <laughs> and then immediately go and just completely blast themselves right in the ass by giving this whole worldview all the way down to a local congregation level. We cherish our privilege to preach and worship together. In this divided world, our peace, love, and unity are a modern day miracle. With Jehovah's blessing, we are confident that the preaching work will continue to advance and the congregations will be made firm in the faith. Again, he's on about this. It's a modern day miracle. It's like, imagine if, if a parent has 10 kids and they dress them all up in blue. And every single time that you see this family, they're always wearing blue. Would you say that that is a modern day miracle? Or do you think that they just told their kids all to wear blue? <laughs> That's not a miracle. It's just insignificant in any meaningful way. And I like how he, he, he does the hand gesture here and the, and the preaching work will continue to, and he's like, well, I can't say grow because we're not really experiencing any meaningful growth. So we'll just say advance. What does that mean? I would like him to actually define what he means by the preaching work will continue to advance. I wish he would say the preaching work will trot along. It will just keep going. The preaching work will just keep going because it's not really advancing anything. It's just existing as a burden to most Jehovah's Witnesses. But as long as they continue to pressure people, I think people are going to continue to wake up. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this really comical PR shenanigan that Watchtower produced. I found it to be absolutely hilarious. And yeah, hope you enjoyed. Uh, don't forget to drop a lock, like on this video, subscribe to the channel, go over to the JW Streams channel. Uh, I know I did have a little bit of audio 
and visual uh, issues there. So I am going to be trying to set up uh, a new system whereby we're going to have improved video for live streams and I need to figure out what went wrong with the uh, audio as well. So anyway, I might be doing a test stream. So if anyone wants to come and hang out and help me figure out some of the, uh, the scuff and the issues, that would be much appreciated. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this and I will see you next time. Everybody say hi, Winston.